Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. I thought today's video, I would answer a question that gets posed a lot in the comment section, which is, how do you make a template for dot, dot, dot? And I've made several videos in the past on this particular topic, along with several builds throughout the 400 and something that I've made so far, where I sporadically show you those steps. Oftentimes I skip it because it eats up a lot of video time. And I thought, well, it's 2022 now, so why not show for this year another version of that same attack? When I first started prop building, I was much like some of you and didn't know the process of making my own template. I knew there was Pepicura out there that I could adjust for EVA or whatever material I was using, but I did a deep dive and learned how from some of the greats. Um, Bill Duran from Punish Props, uh, Odin Makes, SKS, Cosplay Apprentice, Zing Prod, Dolly Lomo, Tons of people out there giving out their knowledge base. Kami Cosplay, Lightning Cosplay, all of them have amazing videos and are generous enough to show you the process of how they attack certain builds. And I thought, why not make a very simple approach to building a template? I have a ginormous head, as some of you have probably figured out by building something of mine that required head size. Uh, my head is 24 inches around at its widest point, so my hat size would probably not fit the average person. But my guess is that you probably have a hat of your own that probably fits you pretty well. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take an object that you already possess and make a template off of it. Um, it's a pretty simple technique. It's one that I use quite frequently, which is the foil and duct tape method. And this practicality of pulling something from an object that already exists is a great way for you to not only practice template making skills, but can give you the potential to make replicas of things and make things 100%. You build for like, say, when you go to a cosplay contest and they take points off or whatever because you bought the hat instead of made the hat. So today I am going to show you how to template and build my very own hat out of EVA foam. Let's get to build. For the duct tape and foil method, you need, yep, you, you guessed it, duct tape and foil. Uh, I stuffed some of those packaging pockets in to kind of help stabilize the hat and keep it shape, but it really wasn't working. So I switched over to my dummy and immediately put the hat out of frame. All I'm doing right here is putting the foil over the hat, taping it into a single layer around the foil. Once it's covered, I trim off the bottom and begin to draw the lines on the duct tape. If you didn't care about the hat, you could just simply cut the seams and skip the foil altogether. I'm going to try and save my hat, so I mimic the seams on my hat and make five panels with the front being the largest. While I have it all together, I put reference marks to help me line up the seams later, and I also go ahead and label the position of where they would be by giving 
giving each piece a name. Then I cut them out and add the darts in the middle of each panel so that I can lay them flat for my pattern. I like to transfer my pattern over to poster board to make it easier to handle and trace repeatedly onto the foam. This is also what I scan into the computer to share my patterns with you all, so I just tape the pieces onto copy paper and scan them in. I trace the duct tape pattern, cut inside the lines, cut out the reference marks with my notch punch, and then to finish it off I go back around all the new outside edges with a sharpie. This would also be the point where I kind kind of guess set angles for certain cuts and I put special markings on my patterns like what size material I'm going to use for each particular part if there's going to be overlays or any of that stuff too. Now on to tracing the pattern onto my material. I'm using two different densities of foam here for this build, but they are the same thickness. The brim of my hat is going to be out of 4mm What the Foam from Cosplay Apprentice. It's super dense EVA and will help me keep that rigidity that I need for my visor. For the rest, I'm using a lower density foam I got from TNT Cosplay Supply Online. It's also 4mm, but it's much more flexible for those round curves. A a lot of people suggest I use silver sharpie so I can see my lines better. I have them. They dry out a lot quicker than the regular sharpies and I'm trying not to mark up all of my patterns with extra colors so that I don't have to go back later and fix them when I go to upload them. Keep forming your foam pieces can drastically help you with the overall shape of your build and limit the amount of pull on your seams while doing the glue up. I heat up both sides of the foam and push it over a round object. This is the glass dome off my back porch.
assembly time. I generally follow the same order of operations when I go to put stuff together. First I glue up all the edges of my pieces that need it with contact cement. After a minute or two the glue will no longer be wet and it will be ready to start tacking together. I start by closing up the darts then move on to lining up registration marks and combining corresponding parts together by pushing their edges firmly. For the brim, I'm gluing it to the bottom of the hat assembly, so it will need glue on the top part, not on the side. I have a faint center line on both the hat base and the brim, so that's where I'm going to start, working from the middle out. As I tack it down, I'm trying to keep the base flush with the edge of the brim on the inside of the hat. Most hats have this sweatband around the edge that also offers a little bit of cushion from that stiffer fabric. I'm mimicking the look with this strip of 2mm EVA. The strip is wrapped around my head for a comfortable fit then joined at the ends. Then it's as simple as lining it up with the edge of my hat. This strip will act as the base for my snapback. So once everything is glued onto the hat, I add the piece mark snapback on top to finish it off. Time for some detail work. I put on my respirator and crank up the wood burner. Most baseball caps have those holes at the top that are for ventilating the heat that escapes through the thin skin on your head. I just plunge it in each of the panels. I also do some detail burning on the snapback as well as go hog wild and burn in faux stitches all over the hat base and the brim. It seems like a lot of work now but when I go to paint, that extra work will pay off. A typical baseball hat has a button on the top to hide the seam of where the panels join in the middle. Nothing like a nice metal chunk on the top of your head to get smacked accidentally and leave a knot on the top of your head. I found out that that little part is also referred to as a squatchy or a squacho, which I never heard those words before. I'm not 100% sure where they come from, but it sounded interesting to mention. Just round off a 18 millimeter EVA dowel on the top and a little bit on the bottom then glue it to the middle.
So one option for detailing was to make it look more like a traditional hat. I had my laser cutter burn out a Much Props logo and I smacked that on the front of the hat and called that one done. Off camera, I've been building a second hat and thought it would be cool to showcase the versatility of gluing basically whatever you want to the foam surface. I happen to have some scale mail from Ben Eady and Stephanie Chan over at Foam Armory that I thought would make a unique look on my hat. I push out the pre-cut strips, pop out the holes, then proceed to weave the holes into the next row until I have a big enough patch to cover the front of my panel. I cap the side and my seams off with a small strip of 4mm foam and get it ready for paint. Two coats of Plasti Dip. For the paint job, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest by hand. Spray paint will definitely crack quickly on something like this, a hat that would get a lot of stress from pulling on and off and your head moving around and all that stuff, so I figured I needed something more flexible to go over the Plasti Dip. Platifex acrylic paint, it's kind of like acrylic and Mod Podge had a baby. It's extremely flexible like glue and gets pretty good coverage too. The yellow took a little bit more, but I would see that with basically any paint that I use painting it onto a black surface. The blue actually was good after one good thing thick coat so wasn't too much to it. For the scale that you see up in the corner there I just hit some of it with some metallic and color shifting paints also in the plat effects line. I decided to just kind of leave the rest of the majority of that hat black because I liked the contrast. After I got my base color down, I thought it would be cool to do some cell shading or at least attempt to on this particular hat. So I put some cartoony looking blotches of darker and lighter colors along the edges and randomly hit some areas with some light black tracing. Because I took the time to burn in the stitches and round over the edges on my panel pieces, it made those lines a lot easier to paint because they had divots that could hold it. I definitely want to do some more of this style in the future builds because it's super cool effect and can kind of give the trick of the eye into believing that it's a flat surface when it's actually a three-dimensional one. <laughs> And we are finished. Here is the end result. I think they turned out pretty cool. I'm definitely not like a professional at doing cell shading, but I thought I would give it a go for this build at least. Um, I've been watching several people recently who've been knocking it out of the park with some cell shading stuff and I wanted to kind of try my hand at it a little bit more. Um, and then using that awesome scale mail that Ben Eady and Stephanie Chan offer over on Foam Armory. Uh, I, I thought that would be a cool accent and something that sets it apart from a normal hat, which is one of the beautiful benefits of using EVA. You can pretty much add whatever you want to it. So those crazy character hats that you see in cartoons and animes and whatever, um, they're totally doable in foam and you can put your own little spin on it. So, yeah. Maybe you will try and build one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to make something out of foam that you use every day and may even fool people into thinking that it was an actual thing that you bought at a store or um, spent a lot of money on. Maybe. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props. Um, I'm kind of gonna rip the much props. I'll, I'll let you rock this scale mail one. That's pretty epic, so here you go. It may be a snug fit. I don't know how big your head is.
If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please join these awesome people listed here with me over on Patreon to create a bigger, better, more creative community together.